In this tutorial, I'm going to test for time invariance on four different examples. The first one is y of t is equal to t times x of t minus 3. To test for time invariance, we first let an input x1 of t equal x of t minus some number t naught. Remember, this happens before you put it into the system. So now, then y1 of t, the output due to this input, is t times x1 of t minus 3. Oops, sorry about that. Minus 3. All right, so now I'm going to say, well, x1 of t is x of t minus t naught. I'm going to take the um, t, it says everywhere in x1 that I had a t, I replace it with t minus 3. So that means I end up with t x of t minus 3, where I had a t1, sorry, sorry, t minus 3, where I had a t up here, minus my t naught. And then for y, let's let y2 equal a delayed version of the output, y of t minus t naught. Now this says everywhere that I have a t up here, I replace it with t minus t naught. So that's going to equal t minus t naught x of t minus t naught minus 3. All right, now, so the point here is that because of the t out front, we have a t minus t naught out front when we delay the output, whereas we just have a t here. But also notice that here we have t minus 3 minus t naught, and here we have t minus t naught minus 3. Now they are the same in this particular example, but that gets to the key about what's happening inside the parentheses here. In this case, I had t minus t naught. This is now the only function of time that I then apply the output process to. Whereas in this case, I apply the t minus t naught to the t. All right, so, um, and again, if you want to think about it a different way, let's think of a specific example. Let x of t equal a cosine, cosine omega t. Then x1 of t equal to x of t minus t naught is cosine omega times t minus t naught, which is equal to cosine of omega t minus omega t naught. That's a cosine with a phase shift. All right. When I apply that to this system, y1 of t was equal to t times x1 of t minus 3. Right. Well, now, if I look over here, this is x1. The only t is right there. So this is going to equal t times x, excuse me, excuse me about that, cosine omega times the quantity t minus 3 minus our omega t naught. And then you distribute it through. But the point is that when I delay the input, this 
delay term just becomes, in this case, a phase shift, but it's, it's a constant that's not affected by the system necessarily. All right. Pause. The second example is y of t is equal to x of minus t. Again, this one is going to be not time invariant because of that minus sign, but again, we're going to show it. So we're going to, again, let our input x of t, rather x1 of t, be a delayed version of x of t. So x1 of t is going to equal x of t minus some t naught. All right, now the output due to that x1, y1 of t, says wherever there was a t in x, replace it with minus t. So it becomes x, well, it's x1 of minus t, which is going to equal x of minus t minus t naught. Because right, again, this t naught is not a function of t in this example. But when we delay the output, let's let y2 of t equal y of t minus t naught. It says everywhere there was a t in the operation, replace it with minus t. Or excuse me, replace it with t minus t naught. So in this case, it says. it will become x of minus, sorry, here, what's going on, there we go, t minus t naught, now you distribute that through and that becomes x of minus t plus t naught. So in this case we had minus t minus t naught, here we have minus t plus t naught. And again, when you think about it, if x starts off, I mean, graphically we talked about this in class, if x starts off, say, like this, if this is x of t, if you put it through the system, what you get out is y t, which is the time reversal of that, which in this case would be that. But if you now think about delaying the input, delaying the input to some t starting at t naught instead of at zero, put that through the system, what you're going to get out is something that's getting flipped around the y-axis minus t naught. This would be x1 of t equal to x of t minus t naught. Oops. Fix that. This is y1 of t. And then if I, instead I take my output y of t that I had up here and delay it, y, call it y2 of t to be consistent here, y2 of t equal to y of t minus t naught. Is this picture shifted to the right? So it becomes something maybe I'll draw it like this. So I don't know where T naught is. What was at zero is now at T naught. Y two of T. Alright, pause again. Alright, in the third example which we did not do in class, but I thought it would be useful to cover, y of t is equal to x of 2t. So now when we let x1 of t equal x of 
t minus t naught y1 of t is going to equal x1 of 2 t so where is t this is t or rather this is the t so i double that so this is going to be equal x of 2 t minus t naught but y2 of t equal to y of t minus t naught says replace what's in here with t minus t naught so you, this ends up being x of 2 times the quantity t minus t naught ends up to x of 2t minus 2t naught and again these are not the same so it is not time invariant pause Our last example will be y of t is equal to x of t, the quantity, squared. Now when I let x of t, rather x1 of t equal to x of t minus t naught, y1 of t is going to equal x1 of t quantity squared is it going to equal that's a 2 there sorry equal x of t minus t naught the quantity squared and if I delay the output letting y2 of t equal y of t minus t naught I get exactly the same thing, which is x of t minus t naught quantity squared. So this is time invariant. Thank you.